And now we're going to continue to refine this. Um, you know, again, it was just that cheek area and uh, duplicated off, dynameshed, deflated negative one, inflate negative one, I should say. And then going through here with my clay buildup and my standard brush and just uh, sculpting this out. Now, again, I'm going to keep saying this for every video just in case you're just joining us and you skip the playlist. But um, I would use insert mesh curve brushes for these things. It gives you a lot more control. Um, or even doing it on a flat plane and then using your deformers to kind of wrap it to whatever shape you want. It's probably a little bit easier. And even just doing insert mesh brushes on a flat plane where you do all these curly cues and stuff and then insert them later uh, into the shape that you want. Um, of course, if you want to match it exactly or you're getting a very specific idea and you want to just get your ideas out first, this is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, that was just a lot of sculpting. H polish, same thing with the fur. And you guys know the drill by now. Just sculpt, H polish. Here I am trying to mask out just these areas here and see if I can't like Ziri mesh probably. And clean up a little bit. Yeah, Ziri mesh this down. Maybe close holes or just extrude that back. See if I can get a little more fidelity out of these flowers. And even now, I mean, if you have this much information, you could manually go through and retopologize this with Z spheres even and get a very nice crease down every single shape. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you could go about, you know, making these things nice and smooth and refined. But this is just more brute force methodology, getting nice even topology so that you can get nice predictable results when you're sculpting and detailing it out. So worst case scenario, when in doubt, you can just sculpt. And obviously this is sped up quite a bit. I'm not sure exactly how much. I'm just trying to make it reasonable length, viewing length. Like, you know, you probably don't want to watch me doing this for 40 minutes, maybe five minutes you could stand <laughs> being bored. Uh, for those little curly cues, we talked about this earlier, you can use the I forget, already forgot the name of the brush. Spin, spiral, it's in the default ZBrush brushes. Uh, you can just use that brush to kind of curl those little things out. You can mask them first too. And, and if you hold down uh, control and you mask an area, you can control tap on your object. Or you can go to the masking menu and you hit soften. And it'll soften your mask and then you can ease those transitions between parts and then you can spiral out those little. And if you hold down alt with the spiral brush, that will uh, turn the direction a different way it'll turn it a different direction, so play with those options. So clay build up, standard brush, H polish, clay brush just to build it up, and then it's going through and refining Damien standard to dig in, probably. It's kind of getting a nice, and again, it's not super refined. Uh, nowadays, uh, I, I would be a little bit more refined with some Z modeler techniques and rebuilding. Uh, but in a pinch, you can just sculpt it. That's fine. That's fine. And just like I was talking about with the lion uh, in the earlier video, if you wanted to, you could probably even come up with a way to make actual leaves and then squash them into a relief shape and make that kind of work for you as well. And again, I'm not, I'm certainly not an ornamental expert. There's probably more um, refined techniques out there on the internet as far as doing this type of ornamentation. In fact, you can use Substance Designer to do this type of ornamentation as well. You don't even have to do it in ZBrush. Uh, if you want something tangible though, or there's, uh, you know, you can use Houdini to come up with a really cool curve solution or the Blender or Maya, whatever modeling program you use, or like in ZBrush, insert mesh brushes insert mesh curve brushes and using controlling curves in my YouTube videos, those controlling curves to give you a nice um, creased edge down the back that points towards you. Uh, and then you could just get this result uh, a lot more controllable, a lot smoother, a lot less sculpting. I, you know, I spent a lot of time just doing a lot of boring sculpting, uh, but this does give you a lot of control. So if you don't mind spending the time, uh, you can still get it done. It's a little, again, it's a little bit more brute force. Uh, and even this could be considered a block out, you know, all these brute, brute force, brute force methodologies could be considered just like, you know what, let's get my idea out, getting the details where I want them and then being able to attack the problem using better refiner, re refined techniques, but at least you have a representation of what it's going to look like. Of course, I wouldn't spend this much time 
<laughs> just for something representative that I'm going to change later. Um, but you get the idea. Get your idea out quickly and then determine how to tackle the problem based on tangible information. So I kind of just took like the lion tail detail parts and then just kind of extrapolated that to kind of a plant-like detail here. And again, if it was too much relief, just mask them and then just squash them down. And again, this was before the gizmo was, in, was added to ZBrush, so we're using the transpose line to just move them down the axis and then kind of squish them into shape. And then, again, another thing you could do is do this on a flat plane, all this detail work, and then use a deformer later to deform it to the cheek shape if that's any easier for you if you're using insert mesh brushes and stuff like that. That's another option for sure. But, you know, there you go. You could also use the inflate brush.